Guys, welcome to your next section, and today we're going to be taking a look at the surface area of pyramids and prisms, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, what is a pyramid? What is a prism? Like, what distinguishes the two in the first place, okay? Because we're going to be dealing with these two types of figures an awful lot. So we really got to make sense of that, okay? <clears throat> Down below, I went ahead and drew four three-dimensional solids, okay? And for the most part, uh, I think maybe with the exception of this back kind of edge there, uh, the dotted sections will will be what is behind the image, okay? So it's it's like behind some other part of the figure. And then the solid edges are going to be what you actually were able to see, okay? So if you imagine this to be like a solid figure that's not translucent or maybe opaque, then of course <clears throat> you're only going to see those segments, those solid edges, those, those uh, solid lines, okay? Well, when we look at these four, you'll notice that the top two both kind of come to a point. But then some students may go, well, wait a second, these also come to a point. So what do I mean when I'm talking about a point? What I mean is that the base is not repeated at the top of the figure, okay? In the bottom two examples, you'll notice that my base here happens to be a pentagon. And then, of course, we repeat that same shape at the top, okay? So these are going to be like parallel faces of our figure, where a face is basically just a polygon, okay, a closed sort of shape. I guess it could be a circle too. But again, um, it encloses two-dimensional space, and they're, they're separated by some amount of, uh, of distance, okay? In the next example, you'll notice we have a triangle down at the bottom. And so with that triangle at the top, once again, I've got two bases, okay? Once again, two parallel bases, okay? Well, in the top two examples, we didn't have that, okay? We've got a hexagon here. And we've got like a square, or at the very least a quadrilateral, over here, right? And when I go to the very top, there is no repeated parallel base, okay? And that's what makes the top two pyramids, okay? Just as you might have guessed, these two are pyramids. Whereas the bottom two, because they have that second base, are what we refer to as prisms, okay? Now, before we move on, we have to understand that they're not always going to be aligned nicely like this. I could, I could turn it on its side. I could stretch it out and make the, the bases look like, well, maybe they're not actually the bases, right? So you need to be aware of what we're looking for, okay? And so what I mean by that is that pyramids are always going to have lateral faces, and so are prisms, by the way. These are the, the sides that are not bases, okay? And the pyramid's lateral faces are always composed of triangles. You guys may notice here's one, here's one. We would have three more on the back, and then one more up front here, right? Same thing's true of this pyramid, okay? We've got one triangle here, here, one in the back, and then one on the right side, okay? So once again, lateral faces are triangles. That's the key, okay? That's not the case when we're dealing with prisms. Okay? You may notice the one on the left doesn't have any triangles. Okay? What's connecting the bases will always come out to be rectangles. Okay? So the lateral, uh, not bases, lateral faces are rectangles. Okay? And that's the key distinction. That's what you're looking for. Okay? Are there these, uh, these triangles around the figure are there, or are there uh, rectangles around the figure? Okay? All right, and once you start to understand that, I think the only thing that we would need additional to start finding surface area, because that's really the main goal here, we're going to be adding up all the surfaces of the figure, is breaking these down into what we call their nets, okay? Now, this isn't required, but I do find it helps a lot of students understand all the pieces, and therefore it can be very beneficial to do, okay? So we've got a hexagon down at the bottom. I want you guys to imagine a slicing down each one of, like, between these lateral faces, right? And so if I've got a hexagon here and I draw that out, then what's going to extend from every one of those that had met at that top peak angle or the vertex? Well, they would have been triangles, right? And so all of those can kind of splay out after being connected to each one of these edges, right? So this is like if we disassemble the original figure, all right? <clears throat> so we're going to make some assumptions when we do these. And that, the, the first like main assumption is that your base is always going to be a regular polygon, okay? That was one of the main pieces that we worked on uh, just last section, right? So 
have to understand, there's going to be a regular polygon. And the second one is that all of these lateral faces, we're going to assume they're congruent unless we're told or shown otherwise, OK? So even though you know, we got one, two, three, four, five, six of these, we could just say, well, the area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height, and I'm going to multiply that by 6, OK? So what we would refer to as the surface area here is going to be the base plus all triangles, OK? All triangles. Which, of course, because the base had six sides, means you're going to have six of these, OK? Now, the last piece I want to leave you guys with here is kind of a tricky thing you'll start noting in some of these problems, OK? Sometimes they will give you a measurement right down from the peak to the center of the base, OK? And a lot of students say, well, good, that's the height of my triangle. That's not actually true, OK? By drawing this down, and then drawing the apothem of this regular polygon over, you guys have actually just made a right triangle. In fact, let me highlight this, not just in green, but in red. And that way you guys can see it more easily. So if you were given the height of the original figure, by drawing this apothem in red over, and then drawing this segment down the side, this kind of dark reddish green triangle here, we can now calculate the height of each triangle, OK? So let's say I told you this piece was 4 and the apothem was 3. You guys should, of course, know that a 3, 4, 5 is a special case for a right triangle. It's a Pythagorean triple, right? So there we go. We would actually say that the height on each of these triangles, then, is 5. It's not this height of the figure, OK? So in order to distinguish between the heights, we refer to one of them as h not 5, 4. That's the height of the, of the pyramid. And then we refer to the other one as the slant height. It's sort of a cursive L. And so we'll say the slant height is 5, OK? All right, take a moment. See if you could uh, kind of draw out the net of this next pyramid, OK? I think it's some good practice for you. All right, so hopefully that went smoothly. All that you're going to do there, you're going to start off with, again, we're assuming this is a regular quadrilateral, so a square. And then if you split down each of those lateral faces, you're going to make these four sides. Of course, compose some triangles, right? So once again, you just take the base and add up the number of triangles, in this case, four, all right? OK, so down below, let's talk about the distinction here. If I'm going to try to draw my net to break down the figure, it's obviously not going to look the same. They don't have triangles working the way around, right? They have rectangles. So Instead of taking the base and splaying triangles out from there, what most students find is easier would be imagine to, to sort of imagine cutting the, uh, the bases off, flipping them upwards, and then splaying all your rectangles out side by side. So let's think about how many rectangles we'll need. We got one on the front, two on these sides, and then two in the back, right? Which should make sense. It's a pentagon. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five rectangles horizontally. Okay, one, two, three, four. We'll do one more here. And five, okay? So I cut up one of those edges, we splayed those out, and then of course you're going to have a pentagon coming off of one of those edges, something like this, and then a pentagon coming off another edge, right? So if you're going to calculate surface area of a prism, surface area of a prism is going to be two bases plus all, not triangles this time, but rather all rectangles. OK? So just a small change. One additional base, and then of course all your lateral faces are rectangles. Once again, let's see if you can draw this out using a similar kind of net uh, to break down the figure. All right, hope, hopefully that went smoothly. And what you would end up with here would, of course, be three of these triangles. One, two, three. I'm sorry, three of these rectangles with a triangle coming off of one at the top and one at the bottom. And it doesn't really matter how you orient those, as long as they're connected, OK? So once again, two bases happen to be the triangles, and then add up the three rectangles. So that's it. It's not actually that difficult if you just break them down a moment. Okay?
All right, head on to video number two for some practice problems.